Hey and welcome back YouTube viewers. What we're going to talk about today is the 737 MAX 8 crashes. Lion Air in Indonesia and sadly just a few days ago the crash in Ethiopia with another MAX 8. Now a bit of background about me, I mean I spent my whole life actually working in television um, uh, but I am also a private pilot. I've been a pilot in England and in the United States for over 20 years and the thing about the pilot community is that we learn from crashes unlike the automotive industry. So every time there is a serious accident every pilot needs to know what happened and lessons are learned. Pilots are very good at flying planes but in the 1950s and 60s there were a few plane crashes and so as computers got better this idea of the autopilot came in and the idea was that a computer would be much smarter at flying a plane than a grey-haired pilot. <laughs> this did not work out. The smart autopilots of today let the pilots fly the plane, but when the pilots exceed parameters, so for example if the pilot turns the plane uh, more than that much, the computer moves it back. More than that much, the computer moves it back. So you're given this kind of window of turn, window of climb, window of speed that you can fly the plane in. And the computer is very good at monitoring the pilots, because pilots are very bad at monitoring computers. But the second thing I'd like to talk to you today, how many of you use a piece of what I would call legacy software, maybe an editing program or a design program, and then the smart 16-year-olds at the software company bring out version 8. And you go and do a procedure that... Uh, you've done all your life and it uh, uh, it doesn't work. So what do you do? Well one, maybe you should have read the manual <laughs> but of course none of us read manuals very much actually pilots do but um, on, on the whole we don't. The thing that we do is we go work 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 and we revert to our old training our basic instinct and try and make it work the same way as it used to multiple times and it ends up crashing. I mean, I, I mean, so there's an analogy in what you've probably come across to the pilot community. First of all, pilots are very well trained and you need a, what's called a type rating in every single type of aircraft. Now the 737 is the world's most popular aircraft and it's been flying for many, many years. It's had some issues over the years, but they've all been pretty well worked out. And pilots like the Lion Air pilots and the Ethiopian pilots, Ethiopian Airlines, by the way, are one of the world's best airlines. They're certainly the safest African airline, as far as I'm aware, please don't write in. But 737 pilots are extremely familiar with a Boeing 737. So they take delivery of Boeing C 737 MAX 8. It's a 737. Haha, <laughs> it's a 737 with a software update. Okay, so they probably went through a training course and they know basically it's got an autopilot and the new autopilots work within parameters. You know, uh, it will recover the plane if you do something stupid. Well, it recovers the plane when you do something stupid in a way which is not the same as the old aircraft, in my opinion. This is, a, is what I think really happened. It recovers the plane in a way which is different from the old software. So for, let's now talk about accidents. Accidents are always a chain. They often start with a very small link. And because something's gone wrong with that small link, you tend to make a large, put on a larger link, which is how you're fixing it. Now a combination of the original fault and the big fix causes an enormous problem. So you put on this big link, which is the third link of the accident chain, to fix now the first two problems and you will die. 
Now, it's well known that if you just break any single one of that chain link, the accident will not happen. Okay, so that's a bit of background about accidents. So, what I think happened, in my humble and personal opinion, and you out there know more than I do, but I'm just putting this out there, is that the new software update on the Boeing 737 MAX works fantastically if you know what the new software update is and that's down to training and I think what happened is it got into a problem the experienced pilots who are fantastic pilots reverted to their initial training they'd probably come across this kind of problem before and they knew that doing something some action always fixed it it saved their bacon in this case they did the old action just like you on a piece of software and it didn't work anymore the software said uh oh i'm version 8 i don't work like that i fix it in a different way but i'm not telling you you should have read the bloody manual well excuse me my expletive it seemed that both the planes almost went vertically into the ground at very high speed how could that be i'm going to talk to you about aircraft stalling so as you take off the air is flowing nicely over the bottom and the top of the wings and you can imagine a wing um, as you increase your angle of climb the air is going underneath the bottom over the top and eventually you're going to increase it so much that the air is very difficult for it to flow smoothly across the whole wing and the back end of it tends to burble and lift off a bit and this area in this triangle becomes turbulent and that produces less lift and what tends to happen is that the aircraft then starts to sink it's in a kind of semi-stall situation the way to fix it is you just have to lower the nose and reduce the angle of attack and the air flows nicely over the wings again and the plane flies perfectly but modern planes have an instrument and today I've made one out of bits of junk in the workshop this is a AOA or angle of attack instrument and can you imagine this is a movable wing section and this gray bit of tool clamps to the airplane and this is on the nose of the aircraft and this little wing can fly just like the uh, wings of an aircraft it's movable and it's connected through a potentiometer eventually to the computer which looks at its input so as the plane flies this little thing can fly around and it measures the angle that it's at angle of attack indicator and this puts the input to the computer now what I think happened in both these situations is that the pilots flew out at a reasonably steep angle of attack. This little instrument goes, uh oh, you're going too steep. And the autopilot then pushes the plane down to recover from the potential stall. Well, that's a pretty standard procedure. Over the years, there's been lots of systems. The most classic system was a stick shaker that just warned the pilots that they were potentially getting into a stall situation and it would shake their stick. Now, the reason it shook the stick is because, as a pilot, actually, you can feel when you're into going into a potential stall. The wings tend to vibrate, and you, if you're very sensitive to this, it must be very hard in a large airliner where it's, you know... <clears throat> big and you don't feel it. So the stick shaker uh, was a uh, an ideal thing to remind pilots that their wings are shaking. Now this is the salient point of this short film. It's what happens next which we really have to investigate carefully. Flying the plane is this older grey-haired man or a woman, probably not without a, with a beard, 737 classic trained pilot who has flown the 737s for 40 years. The pilot tries to recover the plane in the way that the old 737s worked. The computer 
sees that the pilot is doing something different from the Max 8 new software and makes the plane go faster into the ground. The pilot is now completely bamboozled and the plane crashes and you all die. That is, I think, roughly what happened and we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I am sure that there's nothing wrong with Boeing 73 Max 8s. I'm sure if you fully have read the manual, fully trained and they're fantastic airplanes. But my point, I'm just going to repeat it, is they are different. And when a small situation arises, you revert to your original training and you fix it in the way that used to save your bacon. And the new software doesn't want you to do that. It's going, no, I'm version 8. Oh, yeah, all right. And it continues to work only in a version 8 way doesn't compensate for these fully trained 737 pilots who are doing it the old way and it all goes pear-shaped. My humble opinion. Let us wait and see what the outcome of the Lion Air and the Ethiopian crash is. As of today, I noticed that one or two airlines have stopped using their 737 MAX 8s, uh, an airline in China. But lots of airlines around the world are still using them, including Southwest Airlines and other American airlines are using them. Uh, in Europe, uh, they're flown by LOT, the Polish airline, and flown by Norwegian Air. But one or two airlines have put them on hold until this mystery is solved. Now, I'm sure a combination of the countries where the crashes occurred, the airlines, who must be deeply worried, and Boeing are looking into this very, very carefully. The only slight worry that I have is that uh, Boeing did issue what's called an airworthy certificate that emphasised that pilots on the 737 MAX 8 needed to follow the MAX 8 flying procedures and training in the MAX 8 was vital. And I'm sure that is what happened. Thanks for watching and remember the truth is out there.